Hello everyone, and welcome to a special episode of French Fried Trains. We've recently hit 200 subscribers, and I am so thankful for all of you that watch my videos. So as a way of saying thank you, I wanted to do something different and special. My son suggested this, that I should do a tour of my Minecraft city. So that's what we're going to be doing for this 200 subscriber special. And once again, I'd just like to thank all of you. My channel hovered at only 30 subscribers for years and it didn't look like it would ever grow. So I'm just so thankful for everyone who subscribed and watches my videos. So let's get into it. Now this city is based loosely on the area where I grew up, with some changes and lots of Easter eggs, which we'll get into. So this is coming in from a different city to the main part of my city. Like this is the grain elevator we just did in a recent video. That really wasn't there, but it figured this was as good a spot as any. So here we can see the main highway running through town. Up over here, we have the big circular highway entrance ramp and the exit ramp with just some greenery in the middle here. And I'll go up so you can see a top view. This took weeks to do. You also notice my city's hovering in the air. I did that for a reason. One, so I could have room to build nice bridges and build down. And two, it saves a lot of time digging out basements and stuff like that. So here we can see we have a highway exit sign. And as we come down the highway, there's another exit over here and another entrance ramp for going this way. And as we come around in the middle of this ramp, we have a power substation for the town. Now none of the power lines are hooked up because I'm not done working on both sides of the street over here. So this is what the substation looks like. And wherever possible, I tried to build interiors for my things. So if we come inside here, you see that little shed down there actually has an interior. So if we come down in here, and it has an iron door because it would be locked. We come in, we just have some controls for the substation in here. So this is kind of a basic build, but the builds get better as we come into town. So before we head into town, we'll come over here real quick so we can take a look at the highway overpass in a little more detail. So here's the overpass. And you can see the concrete retaining walls going up on each side of the bottom here. We have a little sign up on it. And we can climb up here. Take a look from this view. On this other side over here, you can see another highway exit coming down. That's another main exit to get into the main part of town. And we'll continue on this way. And as we travel into town here, I just want to mention that I am buried in requests right now. I promise I will get to everyone's requests eventually, but it's going to take me a week or two. I love doing the requests and making the locomotives you guys want to see, but there's only so much time in a day. But I promise I will eventually get to all of them. So we just had a little bridge over the creek right here. And we keep coming. Obviously this whole other side of the street's unfinished. That's why I don't have the power lines going into the substation yet. And as we get up here, this is gonna be like where one of the main intersections of the town is. It's not done yet. This road's gonna continue on straight. The other one's gonna continue off to the left here. We're gonna have a train station over there. Over here in this area is gonna be like all the fast food places one day. And here we have a pet supply store that used to be a bank. And like I said, this is based on where I grew up. This is based on a real place. This building's not there anymore. And like I said, I don't build anything without an interior. So let's go inside. So here we can see there's some people in the store here. 
and we just have a bunch of aisles. There's only so much you can do in Minecraft at this scale. We have some shelves with stuff. These are supposed to be like some pet toys and pet food and chew toys and stuff. Through there, or that's just a bathroom. If we go in here, this is like the employee only area. Here's like their break room with a little vending machine and a place to sit. We can come upstairs. Obviously I had no idea what was really in this because I was a little kid, so most of these interiors are coming out of my own imagination. But the exteriors are correct. I spent many hours looking at old satellite and street view photos to make sure I got this town right. So that's the inside of this little store. So let's go back outside. As we come over here, we have Muffler Man right here, which that is like a muffler and auto repair place. You see a little fire hydrant, the railroad crossing sign. Up over here is the main railroad crossing. You can see we have some traffic and a school bus waiting for the train here. Here's the railroad crossing itself. Going off there is the main train where we're working on all of our tutorials at the other end of that. And I built this up here with a catwalk, so you can come up here and pretend to be a signal maintainer if you want. Check out the view. So we'll come over here and check out the inside of this car place. So we have some generic cars here. I'm not that good at making actual road vehicles and have them look like real things so they're just kind of generic. We have a person out here. This is like the main little waiting room where you would wait and talk to the workers about fixing your car. We can come in the garage here. We have a vehicle up on a lift. Lots of little things that are supposed to be toolboxes and stuff. They have a big storage room of parts back here. You can see up there the mechanism for the garage doors. This garage door is open, so it's up on the top. And on the other side of that, we have more garages for working on vehicles. So it's kind of more of the same. Here's a vehicle on the ground. There's a worker checking out this car. Over here, there's another vehicle up on a lift. And we'll go outside and look at the details of the outside of this building. This was based on a real place, so that's why it has these colored stripes like that. It really had that. So we'll swing around, and we'll go down this road next. As we come over here, we have Orkin, the pest control place, at the end of this little strip mall. And this was really there, at least when I was a kid. Back here we have a parking lot with all their trucks. They have their warehouse in here. Here's a dumpster. At the very back, we have a little outdoor break area for the employees. Adding details like these people and dumpsters for everything makes your city that much more real. Now we'll come inside here and check out the interior. So here's where the customers would come in and talk to the front office. They have a little waiting area. And we'll go back in the employee section here. This is just like a meeting room. Over here we have some restroom areas. Same thing here, I think that's just another restroom, and it is. We have an employee entrance over here, a little storage closet, and we'll come the other way. Here's a manager office. 
like I said, I didn't actually go in most of these places as a child, so most of the interiors are out of my imagination. That goes out to their parking lot. This comes into their warehouse here. So right here, we have this little forklift. And just a bunch of storage. So we have a pallet over there, some shelves full of stuff, some tanks for their chemicals, more tanks over here. So that's Orkin, and let's move on. So attached to it here, there's this little strip mall, and I didn't know exactly what was in these, so I just kind of winged it, so we have a boost mobile store here. So we'll come inside here. We have a big open interior. The little podium with their advertisements. Over here, this is supposed to be all the display model cell phones they have. We have all your service kiosk where the employees work. More cell phones down on that side. And of course, an employee area. So back here, we have a manager office. That's just a bathroom. And then they have a little storage room in the back with doors to receive stuff from the outside on back. So that's the Boost Mobile store, and we'll move on here. I know I keep wasting time shutting doors. It's like one of my OCD things. I gotta shut the door after I go through it. Then, to be a little realistic here, this old strip mall has an abandoned area, and this office is for lease, so there's nothing in there. Just to add a bit of realism here. And then this little place on the end of it, I didn't really make any signs, and I'm realizing that now. This is supposed to be like a tattoo shop. And I do believe, at least as of right now, this is a tattoo shop in real life. I don't know if it was when I was a kid, but that's what's on Google Maps. And they just have a little back room here. They have their little office and desk, a sink. So not much, just a little place. So we'll head outside and move on from this strip mall. And actually we'll swing around and take a look at the back. Have some dumpsters here. And then those doors back there is the back of that cell phone place. So they have a delivery truck out back, they just got a delivery. Some more vehicles parked back here. There you can see our train. Since there's really nothing on the other side of this street, we'll come back here and start down here on this other side. Now this street had a bunch of these big garages when I was growing up, so actually I didn't know what was in them. And since I like putting Easter eggs in, and I also like monster trucks, these all have monster trucks. So out back here we have the El Toro Loco monster truck, and this is what it looks like. And it's kind of facing the main road, so you see it as you drive into the city. And they have a little store attached to their garage here. So we just have a little store. And then you can come in here to their actual garage. Here's the interior. We have more trucks in here. So here's the blue El Toro Loco Ice Monster truck. Back here, another different version of El Toro Loco Monster Truck. So just a small little garage here. And there was a bunch of these on this street, so we'll be seeing more things similar to this. So we'll come out.
Now this thing here was a house converted into a business. And many different businesses were in there over the years. Right now, just to make it simple and easy, I made it like a plumber shop and warehouse. They got a little main office in here. All kinds of hot water heaters, a utility room here. A bathroom. Some storage shelves. These are supposed to be like pieces of pipe. There's some fire hydrants over there in the corner. So not much in there. So we'll move on. Like I said, this street had multiple garages. So we have these two garages that are almost twins. It's like that in real life with the different coloration on one of them. They're very similar, just going opposite directions across the front. And since I didn't know what was in here, we have more monster trucks in here. This one's supposed to be the Max D monster truck. And this is what it looks like. You can see we have an engine hoist there, some toolboxes, some extra tires on the wall, and here is a different one. This is Max D Fire, a different color of the same monster truck. And as we get close underneath here, you can see how big these trucks are. So we'll come outside and check out the other garage here. So as we come over here, we can see this is the Gravedigger monster truck. And this one's just parked out in the parking lot here. This is what it looked like. I think if I built it again, I would use some of the new weathered copper for the green parts. But this is what I had at the time. And the interior to this one is very similar to that last one. We have another Gravedigger monster truck in here. A lot of the same stuff because this is just copied and mirrored. And here's the Gravedigger ice monster truck. Just to fill space here. So that's this garage. And we'll move on. So as we come over here, we have yet another different garage. And I continued my theme of monster trucks here. So here we have the Scooby-Doo monster truck. There's his little tail sticking up on the back. The green part's his collar. So that's what the Scooby-Doo one looks like here. And just more garage stuff inside of here. Over here, this one's supposed to be the son of a digger monster truck. And that's all for the inside of this, and we'll move on. As we come over here, we can see the creek. Over there, there's a pond with a little tiny island. That really wasn't there, but I wanted to make a pond since the way I built these roads made too much space. This road was really a little bit more parallel to the tracks. We come down here and we have a basic train crossing back here. As you can see, this crossing just has a stop sign. We have a little control shed because there's a signal back here. So this is just the machinery and computers running that signal. We'll look at the signal as we go on the other side. Then we have this bridge coming over the creek here for the road. This really isn't here anymore but it was when I was a child. Over here we have this small railroad bridge. And I used to hang out down here as a kid. Now back here, this really went to a wastewater sewage treatment plant and I really had no interest in building that. 
And since I usually put these Easter eggs in my city, we changed it up. So that right there is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Command Center building. And that's what it looks like. I have some beacons up there in the colors to be them teleporting in. And this was a fairly complicated build to make everything circular like that. Over there we have the highway. You can see where we started with that green elevator in the distance. I made a little pond with some fountains down there. And we can actually go inside here. So we'll come in through these doors here. Walk down this hallway. Then we'll come through these doors and these doors. And now we're actually inside the Power Ranger Command Center. So there's their circle of computers. I tried to make it as accurate as possible. There's Zordon, the giant floating head. Back there we have the viewing globe. Here we have Alpha 5. Here's the viewing globe. One more quick look around the inside of this, because I'm fairly proud of it. I usually put this in my cities. I usually build the Ghostbuster firehouse. I usually make the Ninja Turtle base, just as a little Easter egg. And this was made way more interesting for me to build than a sewage treatment plant. Now we'll go back outside. And all this is still kind of fantasy. This really wasn't back here. So as we move over here, I've made a parking lot in this big Riverside Park. So this whole park area is not based on anything real. I tried to continue this path, continuing the architecture of the command center. We have a fountain there. And then a big flag here as we get back by the river. And there's this little path to climb down. And we have a little dock overlooking the river here. And here you can see we have some wildlife. There's some flamingos over there. And a whole bunch of ducks. Then as we come back up, this path comes back up this way, up this hill. There's a little waterfall feature here. And then the path comes through this tunnel. Over here, there's the actual sitting area and playground portion of the park here. We have some swings and stuff. Here's a water fountain. Then there's this path, which kind of comes through the woods here and around this. And this comes down to another dock overlooking the river. So we'll leave that area. And up here on top of this hill, we have a really big radio or TV broadcast antenna. And this is fairly tall. If you look at those item frames, it has this flashing strobe lights on it. And this is probably the tallest thing in the world at this moment. So we'll come down here. We have some fences around it with barbed wire so no one messes with it. And we have the control shed here. Kind of looks like the other control sheds that I've built. So that's this whole park area. Like I said, that was all made up out of my imagination. So we'll move on. Now we'll come across the creek here and we're going to come over 
to my street that I lived on growing up. This street is the most accurate area to how it was. This is where I would ride my bike down to watch the trains. Now this is completely different in real life now. This crossing's not even here. This street now comes into a different highway ramp. This house is gone with the highway ramp coming through it. But we'll take a quick look in this house here. We have a little front porch area. Here's their kitchen. I'm not gonna go in every single house because that video would take forever. Just certain ones. Here you can see I actually have the power lines done in this area. Little railroad crossing sign. There's all woods on the side here. It's a pretty big forest. There's a little pond coming off that creek. Here we have another industrial type building. And I have no idea what was in here, so I just made it like a warehouse kind of thing. They have their office over here and some doors on the side. In this little side street, dead ends into the train tracks down here. Over here, is warehouse and like a self storage place. I didn't really build the interior of that. This greenhouse, when I was a kid, people lived there. It was like a duplex, but this was actually a historic hotel for this town, dating back a long time. This whole thing's torn down now. So we'll check out a little bit of this interior. So they have like a utility room here. Here's their kitchen. There's a dining room. Some rugs. Up here is their living room and their TV. And we can go upstairs. There's a bedroom up here. Over here there's a bathroom. Another bedroom. And this is another one of those things that's just all up in my imagination. I never actually went in this place. And this bedroom back here actually has a little balcony. Because, like I said, at one point, this was a really old hotel. So you can come stand out here. Then they had this weird garage with this raised deck and this loft. So we can actually come in here and come up in this loft. Not much up here, kind of just like a little hangout spot. And we'll move on from that. Over here we can see some of the telephone pole and power line details. We have some transformers up on this post. And as we come this way, there was this big warehouse. And this white house down here on the left was the owners of that warehouse. That's where they lived. They had this little fancy backyard. A nice little fire pit area and it came right across to their warehouse here so I'll go and show a little bit of this warehouse but we won't walk through the whole thing just to save time over there you can see the train going by that's where their employees parked lots of semi trucks would come down here and make deliveries and pickups so if we come inside here you can see the green safety path because we have a forklift over there. Here we have their unloading bays, a little pallet jack, more storage, a bigger forklift right there. And then over here, where
where the safety path came around. We got a little office area in here. And a little waiting room. So that's the warehouse. Then there was this dirt road that goes down to the river. We had some friends growing up that lived in this house here, but I'm not gonna go through every single house. There's another house over here. Both of those two houses I just showed you are gone now. Like I said, this neighborhood changed a lot, so I had to rely on my memories and old satellite photos. In this garage here, I'm just coming in here to show you they have a little riding lawnmower because I was kind of proud of that detail. And then we'll continue on this dirt road here. This blue house there holds an Easter egg, but we'll come back to that. Here's another house. We'll take a look at the inside of this one. So we'll come inside of here. Come up on the front porch. Come inside. Um, we'll do the upstairs first, I think. So we'll go upstairs here. They have a really old style bathroom in here. Over here, there's a bedroom. little TV right there. There's another bedroom back here. A really messy bedroom. Just trying to add little details that add realism. Come back downstairs. Here's a living room with a big TV. There's a dining room here with a ceiling fan. Here's a different style of kitchen where I use banners for the cabinets. There's the oven and fridge. Come down in this old basement. We've got another bed down here like someone's making this their bedroom. Washer and dryer over there. Some storage areas here. So this is supposed to be like a really old style basement where they still have their pantries downstairs. Then there's this back computer room. And we'll go back outside. So we'll move back out. Here's the giant forest, which as you can imagine, all these trees were planted by hand, so this took forever. Here's their garage. You can see they have a swimming pool over here. Down here, they have a trailer with a boat on it. And we'll move back down here. So we'll fly down here real quick. There you see a truck with a trailer parked, so someone's on the river with a boat. Over here, we got a little campfire going, and there's a little guy fishing right here. Just to add some detail. We'll come back up this road. And if we take this little path into the woods here. We can see an ancient abandoned train car that's all grown over. This is supposed to be like one of those old open slat livestock cars. And you can tell it's old here because of the plants growing on it. And if we look at this other end here, it actually has the old style with the brake wheel on the top. You 
can actually come inside here if you want. Just a little Easter egg back in this forest. Now we'll come back up here and we're going to check out another crazy elaborate Easter egg. And we're going to check out this blue house here on the inside. And I actually had a couple different sets of friends that lived in this house over the years. So here's their little living room. You can go upstairs. They had a model train up here. So that's what these little table with rails represents. There's a bedroom up here with a pretty nice high ceiling. But the basement is where the real Easter egg is. So we'll come back through the kitchen here, come out to this utility room, and go down in the basement. In their basement, I had this little hole in the dark. There's a hidden lever back in the dark. You can barely see it. But when you open it, it reveals this tunnel. Obviously, this is fantasy. It really wasn't there. So we have this crazy long underground tunnel. The design of this tunnel is actually something I had in a dream once. There's lava down there, and it's pretty long, but it reveals some cool stuff. So we'll fly down here to save time. And as we get to the end, we have this giant portal room. My idea was this would be like an ancient civilization ruins or something like that. And as we come close, we can see we have an end portal here. Surrounded by the lava. So there's the portal. We have this. My idea would be energy would flow up the walls, across the roof on all them purple lines, and down to open the portal. who could have made the portal. I accounted for that too. So we'll come back down here. So up here there's this junction in the tunnel. And if we come down this way, this comes to another underground chamber. And if we come down here all the way, you can see we have a flying saucer parked underground here. It's kind of thick looking because I wanted to build an interior. We have some lava down here, and you can see the saucers actually hovering, and I used all these mobs to represent the aliens, and you can actually come up inside this spaceship here, and I tried to make it look organic and creepy in here. These are supposed to be like their cryo sleep beds or something like that. We have this creepy thing hanging from the roof with eyeballs all over it. Just trying to make it look creepy inside this spaceship. So that's another little Easter egg that got way too elaborate on me. So we'll fly back out of here and come back to the surface. And like I said, I have many friends that lived in that blue house. So I live close by in these apartments over here. So these yellow buildings was the apartment complex where I lived basically from when I was a baby until first or second grade. And there's garages on each end. We have a bunch of cars in the parking lot here. Now basically I built one side and used structure commands to copy it over for the other building. So this was actually the apartment I lived in. Here's a closet, there's the living room. It was kind of small. Here's the dining room and the kitchen, all as one room. Down here there was a bathroom. There's the shower. Over here's bedrooms. 
this was my bedroom as a small child. And there's another bedroom over there. Then there was a sliding door and a little patio. And you could actually see the train in the distance there. But Minecraft obviously doesn't allow you to see that far. All of the apartments on this side have back patios. And you can see, here's another apartment. It's just kind of mirrored the opposite direction from the last one we were in. So we'll go back outside because most of these apartments are the same. If we come down here, there is a little flower bed over here. And on the end of the building, there was the laundry room with coin operated washers and dryers. And then if we come over to this other side, this side was raised up. So the back of the apartments on this side have raised decks instead of patios. There's the dumpster. We'll come in this garage section real quick. And this was really unfinished like that. They had the studs that would be separating everyone's garage from each other, but they didn't actually separate them, so it was all open. So we'll come back outside of here. And we even have some Easter eggs in the vehicles in the parking lot here. That was supposed to be a mail truck. And if we check out this yellow and green one, this is supposed to be the Ninja Turtles party wagon van. Then we'll move on. So if we come up here, this went up to the main road. I have many friends that lived in this house on the left here too. We're not going to tour the whole house, but we'll look at this. We have a little camper out here. And the camper actually has an interior. If I can get in there. So a tiny kitchen and table, some beds. Back here there's a little tiny bathroom. And some beds in the back of the camper. Not much, but it's kind of like our trains. Only so much you can do at a three block wide scale. So here's a quick look at this house. I'm not gonna tour the whole thing to save time. Now across the street here, all of these houses on this left hand side of the street are now gone. Now in this field, there's basically a Starbucks and a Veterans Memorial Place. But this blue house when I was growing up was a pool supply store. And more recently, the Google Photos showed it as an aquarium place. So I made it a fish store. So we come in here and I made this big aquarium tank here. All kinds of fish inside there. And they had a little garage door where they received supplies. And here's all the little aquariums where you would pick your fish to buy. There's some different fish in all of those. And then that blue house in front of it is like their office converted from a house. But I won't go through all of that. So we'll come around here. More houses on this side here. I had friends that lived in that gray house. Then when I was in first or second grade, we moved, but not that far. We moved into this house right here. And this is where I lived when I was a little bit older and was allowed to ride my bike. And we would ride from here down to the end of the street to see the trains. And there was this big apartment complex behind the house here. It was called River Ridge. That house is now gone, and the apartment complex extends out to the road. I'm not going to go in every single one of these apartments. I basically just built one and copied it like a hundred times to save time. 
but we'll go in my old house. So there's a like a little enclosed back porch here. Then this little room where you'd put like your shoes and stuff, and your coats. Down here was the basement that was always dark and creepy. The washer and dryer were down here. There was a workbench over there. We had a small model train set right there. And it's hard to see, but the hot water heater and furnace are down there. But it was really usually that dark down there. Then we'll come up in here. On this very back area, we had like a little breakfast nook in the kitchen. Then a big dining room. And a big living room over here. And then a TV room. Here. There's a bedroom down here, a bathroom, this was a laundry chute, another bedroom, and then we'll take a look up at at the upstairs because the upstairs was a big loft this was originally an old farmhouse had a computer desk up here a dresser and then the beds that one that was red was my bed we had a table up there then there was this weird side room that was kind of like an attic with a bunch of stuff in it So that's it for this house, and we'll go back outside. Then this greenhouse across the street had friends that lived there too. And they had a pool and a swing set and stuff in their backyard here. Then over here, there was this little playground. Like I said, all this stuff on this side is gone these days. So there was a playground. And there's some buses here because there was actually a school in this church we're about to look at. So there's another house right here. I'm pretty sure that was like the owners of the church. But I'm not going to tour that whole thing. Then there was this really old church. And it was pretty cool looking. A lot of different facets to the design of it. And it's sad that this is now gone. So that's what it looked like here. Then this road came off here and went back to that main railroad crossing we looked at earlier. Obviously none of that's finished. We'll take a look at the other side of the church here. And we'll come look at some of the stuff inside here, but I'm not going to tour the whole thing. So there's stairs to go down in the basement down there. And there's all kinds of rooms down in that basement. When we come in here, here's the main area of the church. I think it turned out pretty cool looking, especially with all these colored glass on the sides. So I think we'll actually come back this way. Like I said, I never actually went in here, so this is all out of my imagination. But I made this so you could actually climb the bell tower on the inside here. So we get up to the top, there's the bells. And I made these trap doors so you could open them and look out.
So now we'll head back down out of the church. Then as we come down here, I really don't like building the road slanted like this, but that was the layout of the real city, so I had to. This building was an old school, and then multiple storefronts were in it. I'm not going to go inside it because it looks terrible being slanted like that, but that's the way I had to build it. That building's all gone now too. Over here we have a bank, and a little doctor's office behind it here save time I won't go inside there as you can see we're on the other side of that main crossing and we're almost done here I'll move up to the actual area I'm working on right now we'll come look over here real quick because we didn't look at these across the street this was more apartment type things but I think it was for like seniors like an assisted living place but they got their own apartments and you can go inside all of those apartments but I won't do it to save time so they're all just the same thing copied to save time now over here there's this gas station and there really was a gas station here but I changed it up this is based on a different gas station in a different city where I worked as a teenager Mostly, I changed out the gas station because I actually knew what was inside of this one. So we come over here. There's all the gas pumps. There was a subway in the gas station. So we'll take a quick look inside here. This end had the subway in it. And you can see all those item frames are supposed to be the menu. They had a pop machine, coffee pot, slushy machines here. Here was like the main desk where the cashier stood. So we'll go back outside. Then over here, this green building was called Strikers. And it was a video game arcade and a laser tag place. So we'll take a quick look in here. These are supposed to be all the video game arcade machines. Here's one of those ones you sit inside of. If we come in here, this was like the staging area for laser tag. So I have all these armor stands with armor on it to be the best. And then this was like the laser tag course itself. So we'll come back out. Now this striker's place had a lot more stuff. Like they had golf carts, batting cages, miniature golf. But I decided not to build all that because I can't find adequate pictures from back then because it's gone now replaced by apartments. And I don't feel like building a miniature golf course. So this is the area I'm working on right now. And this big area is all gonna be filled in of course. And over back there, this floating building you see is the beginnings of a castle. So eventually that'll be a two-story tall castle with nice towers and stuff. But that's where I'm working right now and I haven't finished it. If we come back over here, next to it here, there's a car wash, an automatic one. So this is what it looked like, and I believe this is still there. So this is pretty much exactly what the outside looked like. You would drive back here. This back area here has like the things to vacuum out your car. You'd go around that curve to come into the car wash here. I have a full interior for this so there's some sprayers some more sprayers some more sprayers some of these rubber things that wipe your car more sprayers some vertical spinning brushes and then some horizontal spinning brushes here some more sprayers down at the end of this here 
and at the very end the big roof mounted dryer to dry off your car. So that's about as far as I've gotten in my city. Eventually all this will be filled in. Over here you can see our trains. And this is where on the end of this we've been doing all of our tutorials. So we have the freight train and the passenger trains on this track. So there it is, rail fans. A tour of my entire Minecraft city. I know some of you might not like this kind of video, but I thought some of you would. And it seemed like a good idea for our 200 subscriber special. So I'd once again like to thank all of you who are subscribed and all of you who watch these videos. Everyone have a great week and stay safe out there, rail fans.